Ha! Look, now we are finally ready to establish Stockler Samuelson proposition. And again, let me first read to you what this proposition states. In a neoclassical framework, with two final goods and two factors of production, an increase in the price of the final good increases the reward to the factor of production used intensively in the production of that good and reduces the reward uh, to the other factor, provided both goods are produced. Okay, let's go back to the example we are dealing with. We've got two goods, manufacturer, manufacturers and food. Now, according to Stockler Samuelson proposition, it goes like this. If price of manufacturing is going up, rent should go up because uh, production of manufacturers uses capital intensively and wage should go down because production of manufacturers uses wage uh, uh, uses uh, relatively uh, less labor. And on the other hand, if price of food would be going up, we would expect the wage to rise because production of food is labor intensive, while rent going down. Look, this result actually is, is, was an extremely important uh, inspiration for many policy implications. Remember, we are stuck talking about long run. So, what, what happens in the long run is that, look, if you have a country and within this country price of, of some good increases, this means that the sector will uh, uh, will need more capital in order to uh, uh, to attract more capital. Rent needs to go up, but at the same time, companies will be using uh, a, a, will be because uh, uh, because companies are using more and more capital. Right? They need less workers. So the wage is going down. Of course, it's really hard to get this result uh, right away. But remember, we've dealt uh, we've dealt with a lot of horrible co uh, complications in order to achieve wage and rent expressed as a function of uh, prices of food in manufacturers. So now. Let's take a price and prove it with extreme ease. Look, if I want to know what will happen to wage when price of food is going up, all I need to do is, I'm sorry, is to calculate partial derivative of wage with respect to price of food. What do we get over here? This is alpha m over alpha m minus alpha f, right? Because we take this up front. Then we've got gamma w f alpha m over alpha m minus alpha f p times p m negative alpha f over alpha m minus alpha f. And look, Price taken to some power positive, price taken to some power positive. This is clearly positive expression. And what do we have here? Because manufacturing uses more intensively uh, capital, alpha M is bigger than alpha F. So this expression needs to be positive. So we get that increasing price of food actually causes higher wage. Now, what will happen to wage if price of manufacturing is going up? Oh, I'm sorry, if price of manufacturing is going up? We need to just 
calculate another partial derivative. And uh, and the rest we rewrite this part, and here we just move to again. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. Here I of course forgot to subtract one, as we always do, and p m minus uh, alpha f over alpha m minus alpha f minus one. Right now, again, this is positive, positive, positive. This is a positive number as well. We've got minus in front. This is how we get the second result. We've got that if price of manufacturing is going up, wage is actually going down. Okay, now let's now we can move on to rent. What will happen to rent if price of if price of food goes up? Okay, so again, we put this expression in front. Okay, let me rearrange, re rearrange the order a little bit because it actually doesn't really matter in which order we do this. minus out so it will cancel with the minus we've got 
over here. And then I'm getting just alpha f over alpha m minus alpha f times, now, when, because I take minus out of here, I just get alpha f plus 1 over alpha m minus alpha f. And the rest is just simply gamma w pf alpha m over alpha m minus alpha f times pm uh, minus alpha f over alpha m minus alpha f minus 2. And look, now, because those two minuses, the minus that was up front and the one that came from here, cancel each other out, this is positive. Okay, so look, based on that, I can actually show you on the graph the relationship between price of manufacturers and wage. How will it look? Generally, we see that as price of manufacturing wage decreases, but because the second derivative is positive, we see that it decreases at uh, it decreases slower and slower and slower. Okay, so here we have a uh, wage as a function of price of manufacturing. And look, very similar experiment. Uh, very similar, uh, again, I forgot the minus one. Uh, I can perform uh, with rent. Well, now I will calculate second derivative of rent with respect to uh, price of manufacturing. And what am I going to get? Now, look, this expression goes up front. Um, so we've got 1 minus alpha f over alpha m minus alpha f minus 1. Um, give me a second. Yes. Times 1 minus alpha f alpha m minus alpha f. Minus one P F minus one minus alpha M alpha M minus alpha F and now look this expression on the other hand would is negative so What 
do we get from a uh, price equalization proposition? We know that once prices of goods are known, we can obtain, uh, we can find uh, factors, the uh, prices of factors of production. How? Simply by adding here an isocos line that is going to be tangent. Uh, I'm sorry, it's really, really hard to draw without a little ruler. To both, uh, uh, so we find that find uh, we find wage in rent by filling isocos line that is tangent to both of these isocos, right? And look at this. Here we will have rent, so R0, and here we will have wage, so W0. And look, now we can see what happens if, for example, price of the manufacturers is going up. Look, if price of manufacturers is going up, this means that now we need less capital and labor to produce one unit value. So this, okay, let me say that it goes like that, right? We will have some new unit value easily. Okay, and now look, if I would like to draw now isocos line tangent to both of these lines, it would get to look somewhat like that, right? We are, of course, assuming it's a perfectly straight line. It would be tangent to the new ISO cost, ISO unit value line for manufacturing, and the old for food. And look, we clearly see that as a result, rent has increased and wage. went down. Okay, so this is enough about Stockler samples and proposition. In the next videos we will start dealing with magnification effects. Take care.